Okay, it's time. If you want to move up just a little bit, I know a lot of you already have. We're going to sing, so that always helps if everybody's a little bit closer together. Um, glad that you are here. Um, don't think we have really anything new. Uh, remember uh, Donna Penny with that eye surgery? Uh, her eyesight uh, is, um, is just not good. And so she's had some other eye issues. So this is basically cataracts, but it's not a normal thing. Uh, so please keep her. She's really worried about this surgery tomorrow. Uh, mentioned that Kim was here. Uh, I know we've prayed and prayed for, but boy, a card saying, you know, welcome back. <laughs> uh, her and Teresa both were here this morning. And that, that's just, I told him this morning, I said, it's all time I ever have prayed for a woman to get fat. And, you know, that's just sort of what we've been doing, you know. Uh, in life fun. <laughs> but sure enough, she was down to 87 pounds, and she's up to about 112, I think. So, uh, good. Um, card for the uh, Walters family. Of course, uh, Michael's mother passed away a couple of weeks ago, and I'm sure if you haven't already sent a card or something, that would be uh, something good to do uh, as well. Uh, we got somebody to sign up uh, for the other soup that we needed for next Saturday. Uh, we still maybe need a, a dessert or two. So if you haven't signed up, those sign-up sheets are back there. The lectureship is Sunday morning. Uh, you know, Saturday morning. What did I say, Sunday morning? It is Saturday morning starting at 9. 9, one speaker, 10, 11. After that, we'll sing and then we'll have lunch. Um, it's designed where we have a break, so... Uh, Try to come for all of it. The theme is on the family this year, so I think it will apply to each and every one of us in a good way. Uh, but uh, if you can't stay for all three, come for one or two. Uh, we normally always have a lot of folks coming from different congregations. Where we normally fall short is us coming. <laughs> and I know that it's not such that everybody can do it, but I hope that you are planning. Uh, and because it is on the family, I think that this would be a wonderful opportunity to to, to invite, you know, family and friends or neighbors. Uh, very, very good, good group of speakers. Um, fellowship meal next Sunday, uh, so please keep that in mind uh, as well as everybody's invited for that. Uh, giveaway day coming up on the 16th. We'll have a, a sign-up list starting next Sunday for workers. It normally takes about 40 people to pull that off, but uh, Tom and Rowena and Eric, they've worked diligently on getting things arranged in the barn. Uh, if you still not brought your stuff, now's the time to do that. Uh, I think we got more bigger stuff this year than we've ever had. Uh, so it uh, should be a good, good day for us. Stevens has in charge of the singing. Clint has the opening prayer. Pat's taking care of the Lord's Supper if anybody has not partaken of it. And Alvin has the dismissal prayer. If you'd like to mark your hymnals to number 871, 871, <clears throat> that'll be the song. Uh, our first song is going to be um, first up, 840, uh, 545. Give me just a second to get there. <clears throat>
who has washed us from our sins. What a Savior we have. We uh, pray, dear Father, as he lay prostrate in the Garden of Gethsemane, that he prayed, not my will, but thy will be done. And with that in mind, he went to the cross and washed us from our sins. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we all may say who are gathered here, not my will, but thy will be done. Let us walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. Keep us away from darkness and let us repent of our sins because we are only rags. We pray for our missionaries overseas. We pray that we, we know that they, they're on a budget, so they never have enough money. So we pray for them. We pray that you will strengthen them, that you'll put your hand upon them, that they will preach all the gospel. And we pray for them. We pray that you will increase our faith. Increase everyone who is gathered here. Increase our faith, Lord. Search us, O Lord, and then lead us into the everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 711. We'll sing all three verses.
Doug's got one right here. Oh, it, okay. Where are they? the blessings that you pour out upon us. And Father, that greatest blessing was your gift of your Son, who was obedient to the point of death upon the cross of Calvary for our sins. Father, as we partake of the bread which represents thy Son's body, let us do so in a manner well-pleasing in thy sight, giving glory and honor to thy Son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Pray with me again, please, as we give thanks for the fruit of the vine. Our Father, we again approach thy throne of glory to continue our thanks for your love that you had for us. Father, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, which represents the shed blood of the new covenant that was established on better promises, let us partake of this cup, remembering the sacrifice of your Son, the blood that he shed for us. In his name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Eight hundred sixty-one. I hope y'all don't uh, give me trauma the way the teen singing did some forty odd years ago. Went down to East Ridge and nobody knew this song at all. And I think we, several of us, have talked about it. So we're going to try it. Everybody will be happy over there.
Song 34 was one of my favorite songs uh, if, in the whole song book. It's the I Stay in Awe song. Um, let me look, read just a couple of the lyrics uh, that I think are, are impactful. Um, the first line is, you are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words. Uh, you skip down a little bit. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom uh, the depths of your love? Um, and then the chorus, and I stand in all of you, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praises due, I stand in all of you. Uh, you know, that's a, a, a... All of God is something that you see all throughout the Bible. Uh, you see it in the prophets, you see it in the New Testament, you see it in, in the Old Testament. You, you think about when Moses goes up on the, the Mount Sinai and the voice of God uh, speaks to the people, and the people are so overwhelmed that they say to Moses, you know, don't you speak to us, don't let God speak to us, because if God speaks to us, we're going to die. You know, we can't handle it. Uh, and you think about Isaiah going to the throne room of God, and uh, you think about uh, the books of wisdom. We've been reading through the Psalms on uh, Bible class uh, readings, uh, and we're finally out of Psalm 119. It took about a month, but we did it. Uh, and uh, uh, next year, we'll be continuing to finish out the book of Psalms, but we're also going to go into the book of Proverbs a little bit. Um, but so often throughout the Psalms and, and the Proverbs and all of the wisdom literature in the, in the Bible, you see talk about the greatness of God. Uh, the very end of the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon says that the end of the matter, all has been heard, uh, fear God and keep his commandments. Proverbs begins this way. Uh, look at verse 2 of chapter 1. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealings, in righteousness, justice, and uh, equity, uh, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth, let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance to the understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, and fools despise wisdom and instruction. Uh, what Solomon says in all of Solomon's wisdom, you know, wisdom given by God, you know, people search in a lot of different ways for meaning in life. They search in a lot of different areas for uh, purpose and drive. Solomon says the beginning of all the good things of life, uh, the beginnings of wisdom, the beginnings of knowledge, the beginnings of, of justice and righteousness and uh, all of those things, the beginning of that is fear of God, is having a understand that, that all of God and respect for who God is and, and what he's done for us. And so as we've sang through so many songs today, you know, that's a theme that is constantly present in the songs that we sing, that, that God is a great God who's worthy to be worshipped uh, and a God who's worthy to be served. Now, maybe today you've not served God the way you ought. Uh, maybe you've not become a Christian and uh, accepted the blessings that he's willing to offer. Uh, let me encourage you to do that. Put Christ on in baptism and, and receive those blessings. But maybe you are a Christian, but you have not shown God the respect and the awe and the service that he deserves. Uh, let me encourage you to make that right with God today. Uh, seek the prayers of the church as we come and stand and sing.
Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful and blessed that we've had this day to come together to worship you in spirit and truth. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for the lessons we've been presented here today, for the songs we have sang, and the lesson we heard from Steve from the Holy and Divine Word. We pray, our Father, that we'll take this lesson, climb to our heart, that we can sow seeds in this congregation, in this community, that we'll grow more. We thank for Heavenly Father for the church here at Dayton. We pray that you'll continue to bless it and bless each one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> 